This is the most fragrant fried rice you'll ever have. Simple fried rice with perfectly cooked eggs and succulent shrimp, fragrant or smelly, you decide. Hey everyone, I'm Flo, Dude is behind the camera and we're all about simple food, simple faith. This is one of Dude's favorite fried rice. There was a restaurant nearby that we used to order it all the time, but it closed about 10 years ago and he can't stop talking about this fried rice that he used to have. So now we make it at home. The thing with fried rice is you have to have all your ingredients ready to go. So we're gonna chop up our onion. I have half of an onion here and we're just gonna finely chop it. Trick I learned is that if you keep the little butt on at the bottom, you can hold everything in place while you're chopping. I have three green onions, and lately I've been saving these bottoms, maybe not this one, to plant in my garden so that they will grow back. And they do. You can also actually, if you cut it a little bit, like maybe two or three inches up, you can put them in water and they'll grow back as well. So amazing. I'm gonna keep the white parts of the green onion, maybe the light green parts too, adding it to that because I don't really like those pieces not cooked through. And then we'll just chop up this and set it aside. So here is the polarizing ingredient. Some people find it super fragrant and others may find it stinky. It's called balachan. It is a, a shrimp paste. It comes in this cake form. Let me open it up for you. I mentioned balachan or shrimp paste in one of my videos. I can't even remember which one now. And, um, and oh my goodness, it is so smelly. And people were, well, someone suggested that, oh, maybe it's so expensive you can't, you can't afford it. This cake is essentially $1.69 for this whole thing. And for this particular dish, I only need two teaspoons. So you can only imagine how long this will last. And I've heard that it lasts forever. So even though people say that it's only gonna last six to 12 months, I can't even imagine if you store it correctly, it'll last you forever. This stuff is uh, gonna last you through apocalyptic times. <laughs> Indeed. At least your food will be flavorful. Two teaspoons. I don't know. I'm just eyeballing it. Yeah. I'm gonna use about this much. Okay. Now, if you're gonna store this, wrap it up tightly, double bag it before you put it in your fridge because it will penetrate everything and make everything else stinky and you don't want that. Balachan aromatic uh, ice cubes, you don't want that. Ugh. If this is your first time trying a shrimp paste, I would suggest using maybe just a teaspoon to see if you like it. And, um, but if you're familiar with the intensity of this flavor, then of course add more. All up to you. I'm also using uh, four eggs that I'm going to lightly beat. that aside. I have six ounces of a shrimp that I've already defrosted, taken the shells off and deveined, and I've also pat them dry so that they're not wet while cooking. Okay, we're gonna heat up the wok on medium-high heat to start with. If you don't have a wok, you can always use a, a large frying pan. That will do the trick, so long as you can hold all your ingredients. I like to use the wok because it's big, and I can move all the ingredients around quickly. Once you see a wisp of smoke, add your oil, one tablespoon. And I'm just gonna do the eggs first. So 
when your wok or your frying pan is heated sufficiently before you add the oil, your cooking shouldn't stick. Okay, once your egg is mostly cooked, you can remove it. Actually, now I'm gonna turn off the heat so I don't move fast enough. Turning it back on, adding a little bit more oil, get the shrimp going. You can also cut these down to make them smaller so that they're more bite-sized. We're just gonna leave them whole. And also with the shrimp, you just want them to be mostly cooked through. Again, turning off my stove, get the shrimp out. I'm gonna put it on top of my eggs because we're gonna add all of that back in later. Okay, turning my wok back on, adding another tablespoon of oil. So you probably use about two to three tablespoons. I'm gonna get my onions going. All right, and we're gonna throw our piece of balachan in there. I'm gonna break it up, heat it through. And this is gonna take about three to five minutes of cooking because you want that bolachan to kind of become more fragrant as if it's not fragrant enough. If you have good ventilation, now is the time to turn it on if it wasn't already on. And this will help determine whether or not you enjoy the smell or not. It's kind of like blooming a spice. You know, Indian cooking, you should, um, fry up your aromatics before anything else and all those spices. And that's to help those spices maximize their flavor. And I think balachan is kind of the same kind of concept. You want to heat it through, cook it up, so that you get ultimate fragrance. All right, make sure all those chunks are like melted into the bottom of the pan. You don't want to, well, I wouldn't anyway, want to bite into a chunk of the shrimp paste. Okay, I'm adding my leftover rice. I've got about four cups of cooked leftover rice that's been um, cooled. And you want to use cold rice for this leftover rice because if it's wet rice, your fried rice is going to be soggy and that doesn't make for good fried rice makes good for soggy rice. So you want it to be cold and dry so that it absorbs all the flavor from whatever ingredients you're using. Just wanna cook this through until the grains kind of break up. I'm gonna turn down the heat a little bit. Maybe to a medium. Okay, adding a tablespoon of dark soy, dark soy sauce. And if you don't have dark soy sauce, you can use regular soy. The dark soy helps to give the color, the darker brown that we want. Tablespoon of oyster sauce. Sorry, it's a new bottle. So one tablespoon of this. And for some heat, we're gonna use the chili sauce to give it some heat, about half a teaspoon. But if you don't want it spicy, that's fine. You don't have to add it. Um, you can also use just fresh chilies cut up or you can use some dried chili flakes. Or you can see that red coming through the chili oil. All right, adding the shrimp and the eggs back in. I'm gonna chop up the egg. All right. Turning off the heat and throw in our green onions. Stir that around. 
And that is it, guys. Super fragrant shrimp and egg fried rice, Malaysian style. All right, this makes a lot, guys. This is probably good for three to four servings. This will be dinner tonight. We're making some veggies on the side. Fried rice for days. Oh my goodness, that's just half of it. Check it. Oh yeah. So much left. Are you all ready for? Yes. The taste, and in this case, the smell. For those who haven't had food dishes with balachan in it, it takes some getting used to. And for those who love it, they love it. It's kind of akin to durian. The same place, you know, that you would get uh, in Malaysia. You get durian and uh, balachan. Growing up in a uh, Malaysian Chinese household, bold flavors and bold aromas and smells were always a part of the mix of growing up. So this is one of the reasons why I used to order this dish at that restaurant. Rest in peace. All right. Oh yeah. Mmm, so good. So you have been warned, people, either you will love it or not love it so much. So you might want to start on the smaller portion size of the balachan paste. So much flavor. This bases it off of a basic fried rice recipe where it has all these great textures and flavors in it already. But you add in that balachan and the heat of the chili oil, perfectly cooked shrimp and egg. It's a mouthful. A flavor explosion. explosion. Awesome, thanks dude. Mm -hmm. If you're one of those who think that balachan is smelly, please feel free to just omit it. You'll still get a really good tasting fried rice. But not as good. <laughs> For another simple fried rice recipe, check it out. I will see you over there.